Vice Chancellor O'Shea, Dr. Kennedy, Mr. Litter Littlejohn, Professor Galligan, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, esteemed graduates, good morning. First of all, let me start by saying thank you. It is a pleasure to be here today and to be invited to address you, the University of Edinburgh School of Social and Political Science Class of 2017. And it's an even greater pleasure to receive this honorary degree. It's a privilege to take this stage knowing the remarkable accomplishments of my co-honorees. Um, I also, as I was looking through uh, the history books uh, on my way over, saw that uh, a Canadian Prime Minister, who was actually my second favorite Canadian Prime Minister, Wilfrid Laurier, uh, was conferred an honorary degree from here as well. So it, uh, it touches me to be here today. Dr. Kennedy, I am honored by your kind words today, your reflection on some of the things we've been able to accomplish in Canada reminds me of a quote by Alice Munro. Some of you may know her. She's one of my country's greatest exports to the world, and she proudly claims both Irish and Scottish heritage. Ms. Monroe once said, the complexity of things, the things within things, just seems to be endless. I mean, nothing is easy. Nothing is simple. Now that quote is a great reminder that if you want to make real change happen, it takes work. The important things are usually pretty tough. But if you stick to your principles, the outcome is worth it. I can promise you that. But ladies and gentlemen, today is not about me or even my fellow honorees. It's about you. I know that this celebration marks the culmination of years of hard work. So let me congratulate you on your tremendous accomplishments. This is actually the first time I received a degree at a convocation ceremony. I skipped the formalities my first times around. But being here today does take me back. It was 23 years ago that I graduated from McGill University in Montreal. Now, you might know this. McGill was founded by a Scot, as were many of Canada's preeminent colleges and universities. The Scottish contribution to Canada goes well beyond academia. Indeed, the history of Scottish people in Canada is quite significant. Scottish settlers were among the first to set down roots. In fact, we have a province on our east coast that literally translates to New Scotland. Our streets and buildings are painted with Scottish influence. Our first Prime Minister was Sir John A. Macdonald. The name should be a major giveaway, but just so we're clear, he hailed from about an hour away from here, spending his early childhood years in Glasgow. Another great Scot, my grandfather, Jimmy Sinclair. He was born in Banffshire, and as family lore had it, his father, my great-grandfather, James George Sinclair, who was a local school teacher, uh, was also a passionate fisherman. And unfortunately, back then there were rules around who could fish in which streams. And about the fourth or fifth time, the local constable caught him and threatened to throw him in jail if he caught him once again fishing in the Laird's stream. Um, as family lore has it, my grandfather says, but, my great-grandfather said, but if I cannot fish, I cannot live. <laughs> so he went home, unrolled his you know, schoolhouse maps, looked at a big map of Canada, pointed to a spot on the west coast of the country, says, there, British Columbia, <laughs> where we can be free and no man owns the fish. <laughs> So he packed up his belongings, his family, including his two-year-old son, Jimmy, and they moved to BC. Jimmy would grow up, 
become a Rhodes Scholar, uh, went on to serve in the Royal Canadian uh, Air Force in Sicily and North Africa during World War II, being one of the only people in the world to be both an RCAF member, an active member on duty in the war, and a member of the House of Parliament because he'd been elected um, the year before he was shipped out. So the idea of service runs deep in my family and is one that uh, has made us all very, very proud of both my grandfather being a politician as well as my father. Mais la présence de l'Écosse au Canada s'étend bien au-delà de quelques personnalités historiques. En effet, 15 % des Canadiens sont d'origine écossaise. Autrement dit, les Canadiens, y compris moi bien sûr, ont un grand lien, une affinité avec les Écossais. La relation qu'entretiennent nos deux nations est particulière, basée sur un passé et une culture commune. D'autant plus que nous partageons actuellement un certain nombre de priorités et de valeurs, comme faire croître la classe moyenne ou veiller à ce que nos citoyens possèdent des bonnes compétences pour obtenir un emploi aujourd'hui et demain. Nous sommes aussi déterminés à faire valoir l'importance du commerce libre et équitable, comme nous l'avons fait récemment avec l'accord économique comme et commercial global et à concilier les besoins de nos entreprises et les besoins de notre environnement en encourageant les, les économies axées sur la croissance propre. So, from the people of Canada to the people of Scotland, thank you for being a strong partner to us in this new global era of so many challenges. But I'd actually like to think about talk about that a little bit today, the challenges and the changes facing us. See, change is happening around us all. There's no question. We see change in the way we work, in the way we have to constantly upgrade and develop our skills to meet the demands of a modern economy. There's change in political moods, in economic realities, and in social mores. Change in how we communicate, commute, and consume. I know all of you already know this. The pace of change has never been this fast, and yet it'll never be this slow again. You're graduating at a time when the world seems to be in a perpetual state of flux, and I understand the anxiety that comes with that. I get it. Let me assume a few things, if I may. You, the class of 2017, are excited to be entering the real world, excited to start your careers, but also, probably, a little nervous about what the next few months or even years of your life will look like. Will you get a job in your field? Or will you take on something part-time and entirely unrelated to your degree while you refresh job boards and send out a million resumes? Will you be able to buy a house, make rent, or will you be moving back in with your parents? These concerns are normal. And I'm here to tell you that you don't need to have it all figured out yet. And if you think you have all the answers, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you probably don't. But honestly, that's the privilege and the beauty of being young and having had an extraordinary education. You can try things out. You can and will change your mind. I used to be a bouncer in a nightclub. <laughs> and a snowboard instructor. When I finished school, the last thing in the world I expected to be was a politician. Life has a funny way of surprising you sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, there, there is no right path. There is only your path. Some of you will go off to start companies. Some of you will rise up the ranks. Some of you will work in politics. Some of you will run for office. 
Some of you will go back to school. Some of you will start families. Others will choose a path less traveled or a different path. But I'm here to tell you that whatever you decide to do, do it well. Do it with your whole heart. Do it with purpose. When you're young and your responsibilities are few, dream bigger, push harder, think boldly. And most importantly, don't settle. Surround yourself with people who love you and you believe in. And take that leap of faith. Now, I know that Many convocation speeches hinge on the variation of the do big things mantra. And that's important. But I also think it's equally important to talk about the idea of doing the small things in a big way. Now hear me out. It's a good way to live your life. And it means a lot of different things to different people. Let me give you a few examples. Maybe doing small things in a big way means giving that extra 10 bucks a month to charity if you really believe in it. Or sending your mom flowers on a day other than Mother's Day. Or striking up a friendly conversation with someone who looks totally different from you. Or trading your car for a bike when the sun's out. Whether you realize it or not, these things matter. That extra 10 bucks just brought textbooks for a girl trying to get an education. Those flowers, well, they just made your mom's whole week. Your new friend's story will help you understand your own identity in a totally different light. And that bike, well, that bike is saving the planet. Your actions, today and tomorrow, big and small, have an impact. So be kind, say please and thank you, and hold the door. At this exact moment, you're all worried about what you're going to do. But don't worry about that stuff. Figure out instead who you're going to be. The rest will follow. And I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy, because it won't. The things that are worth it are never easy. So be open to new challenges. Be willing to compromise and know that along the way you will make mistakes. It's a part of the journey, an essential part of the journey. Think about it. When you succeed, you ask yourself why you succeeded. No, you give yourself a pat on the back and you say, I succeeded because, well, because I'm awesome because I'm great, and you move on to the next challenge. But if you fail, if you don't succeed, what do you say? Oh, is it because I'm terrible? No. You say, oh, it's because the wind was in the wrong direction, or I didn't get the right partner, or uh, I didn't plan properly, or I didn't uh, you know, reach, do enough research, or you start to think about why you failed, and we don't think about why we succeed. And learning, learning from your experiences, your failures and your successes, is about the most important thing you can do to help yourself on your path forward. So let me leave you with this. If it excites you a lot and scares you a little, then you should probably do it. Be bold, be brave. Be open to the incredible opportunities in front of you. Class of 2017, we need you. The world needs you. So be the best versions of yourselves and go make us all proud. Congratulations.